Rajan Mehra, MD, India and South Asia, iJets Dubai and former India head of Qatar Airways is now joining us. Sir, thank you so much for uh, joining us here this uh, morning. What do you make uh, of uh, the draft aviation policy? It has been talked for years and years about uh, uh, having an aviation policy. What is your initial thought? Uh, yes, indeed, it's been uh, talked and discussed for about a decade. So really, I must uh, compliment the government for uh, showing a sense of urgency and bringing out the policy, approving it within eight months uh, since the draft was uh, first released last October. Uh, I, I, I think it's an extremely encouraging policy. I think it's positive. It will have far-reaching uh, impact on uh, the aviation industry in India, uh, which in turn uh, would lead to ripple effects on tourism, on job employment, on a lot of other areas. So I, I, I think it's a positive step forward. There has been uh, liberalization done on uh, uh, flying outside the country. There has been uh, 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 an effort to promote uh, connectivity to the regional routes. Uh, the 5 by 20 rule has been abolished. Uh, it's been replaced by a, a minimum of 20 aircraft, of course. But I think that uh, should not be a major problem for the airlines like AirAsia and uh, Vistara, which are the, the main beneficiaries of this uh, uh, new rule. Uh, another uh, important and encouraging aspect was MRO. I think uh, the government has realized that MRO activity uh, can be a, a, a great foreign exchange owner for India. Uh, even the Indian carriers right now are going outside the country for uh, MRO uh, work, which is maintenance research and overall. Uh, I, India is ideally located to be an MRO hub. Instead, countries like Dubai and Singapore are getting all the MRO business. Uh, Coming back to this uh, 5 by 20 rule, there have been airlines which have, are not too satisfied. Uh, one can understand they had to wait five years, they had to build up a fleet. But then uh, Indian aviation is changing fast. We uh, are currently ninth uh, aviation market in the world, but slated to be the third largest uh, in the next uh, uh, a few years, I think, I think up to 2020. So. Uh, if we need to do that, then uh, a few painful decisions have to be made. I would have liked to see uh, some mention of business aviation, uh, which forms an important part uh, of the aviation sector in any country. Uh, it's not something for the rich and famous anymore. It could uh, lead to uh, growth. It could, lead, it could be an engine for economic growth, as uh, it has shown in countries like the US. Uh, so I wish they had... Uh, uh, had something for business aviation. The uh, business aviation could have contributed to uh, regional connectivity in, 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 in a big way. Uh, the scheduled airlines are all hesitant right now to go to these regional routes. Uh, but on the whole, I think uh, a very, very positive policy. And uh, by and large, I think they have addressed uh, uh, some long pending concerns that the industry had. And uh, uh, most of the stake players should be uh, uh, satisfied. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, how would uh, you go ahead and look at the target of passenger flying to about 300 million from about 85 million that we did in FY16? Slightly optimistic but achievable? Not at, not at all optimistic. I think I think we could do better. <laughs> I've always maintained that you know, 18 for a country like India, 18 to 20 percent uh, is achievable at any time, uh, as long as we get our act right. And right now, the government seems to be fairly getting its act right. Uh, India, just two percent of India's population travels uh, by air. You compare that with countries like Thailand, which gets a 10 percent of its population traveling by air. Countries like Bangladesh which get 5% of its population traveling by air. It doesn't take rocket size to see the potential ahead. Uh, we have a bulging middle class that's coming up that wants to travel. We have uh, businesses that want to uh, expand into the interiors. So I, I, I think we could, we could all be surprised uh, by the numbers. And I think certainly uh, 300 million is achievable by 2020, as long as the, the reform policies continue with the government. Right. Uh, you know, uh, also particularly, how would you look at the 0 by 20 or uh, 5 by 20 rule, which has been replaced by 0 by 20? Uh, how will it help the new hairlines? How will it help the sector by itself? Uh, see, uh, this this has been a, a consentious, uh, you know, issue for long, long time. Airlines like Jet and Indigo have 
uh, well, understandably felt that since they had to wait five years and build up a fleet, uh, that the, the newer carriers should not get the advantage of uh, being able to fly abroad uh, uh, as soon as they launch services here. Uh, understandable, but like I said before, you know, uh, if, we, if we need to target 300 million passengers, if we need to increase, increase our tourism, if we need to uh, look at uh, job employment, skill development, then uh, a few uh, uh, difficult decisions would need to be made by the government. And they've made it. Uh, well, they haven't completely liberalized. Uh, they are not saying that you can fly right now. Uh, you can fly right now, but you need to have 20 aircraft. So 20 aircraft is a reasonably large number. Uh, but having said that, airlines like uh, Vistara and Air Asia have deep pockets. Uh, they have large fleets uh, sitting outside the country. Uh, it may take them a little time, but I don't think that uh, they would uh, have a very major problem in getting a fleet of 20 to be able to go abroad. And they do want to go abroad uh, from India as soon as possible. So I would see activity in the next uh, maybe six, eight months to one year uh, with these airlines. And uh, we, we could see them flying abroad uh, in a year's time. Uh, how it would affect, it would certainly uh, uh, bring in more competitive fares for the consumer. Uh, it would certainly bring in more tourists and tourist dollars. Uh, it would lead to job employment. There would be a lot more requirement for pilots, for cabin crew, for ground staff. Uh, so uh, on the whole, I think uh, it, it could be a game changer uh, for the industry. Right. You know, the point that you made about fares, till now, in the domestic space, in the last two years, we've seen a lot of aggression by new players coming in. You know, we've had Vistara coming in, some of the other players have become bigger. Uh, but fare discipline was maintained for quite some time, you know, till we saw a decline. And even now, if we see, uh, the fares have not gone as low as they were earlier, or, you know, there is some sort of uh, rational move in the fares. So that is something which, which you believe would continue. It's a healthy sign for the industry. Yes, I think it would. You know, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's simple uh, market dynamics that if you have more players and more competition, uh, th th there's a limit to which the fares can go up. You know, because if everyone wants a piece of the pie, uh, and although the pie is expanding in India uh, quite quickly, uh, still you need to make sure that you're not uh, outpriced uh, uh, by the competition. So, uh, all in all, I think it's good news for the consumers. They're going to see not just a lot of additional flights, a lot more choices, but I think they'll see uh, uh, better deals, uh, better fares, and uh, better services. Right. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, capacity addition is concerned, is that a big uh, constraint? Uh, because, you know, except Indigo, none of the other players have actually gone out and ordered for very huge capacity, which they can get delivered in the next few years uh, for, for, you know, this rising uh, passenger traffic that people are believing in. You think that's a big concern because some of the balance sheets were not particularly quite healthy to go ahead and order a lot of fleet? Uh, no, from what I understand, even airlines like uh, Spicejet and uh, GoAir have, uh, well, talked about uh, ordering uh, a considerable number of planes. So I don't know how far you know they're going to uh, uh, go ahead with it. Probably they will now. But I think on the whole, you will see fleet expansions of all the airlines. Uh, coming in and that, uh, that that would benefit the industry. Right. Uh, just a word on, uh, you know, how the Indian uh, aviation space is operating. We are currently in a sweet spot where passenger growth is high, fares are lower, uh, as in uh, the uh, crew prices are lower. India is in a sweet spot, so dollar is not being as volatile as it used to be. And uh, at the same time, we are getting new policies, new players coming in, all of which are doing healthy pricing. I, I, I think this is, these are exciting times for aviation in India. Uh, I, I, I think, you know, uh, going forward, uh, we could see uh, a lot happening and positively. Uh, uh, this, this is the time when, you know, India is ideally placed to be a hub for both passenger and cargo traffic. Uh, India is placed to be a hub for MRO activity. Uh, the Indians themselves are traveling uh, abroad uh, like never before. Uh, they, they, they want uh, better fares, they want better services, uh, they, they believe in quality now. So I, I, I think it's good times for aviation. I think all the airlines should be happy with this uh, uh, policy. Uh, 
and by the fact that most of their stock uh, stocks are rising i think shows that uh, they 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 are satisfied so i think we 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 can see a lot of positive activity happening in the next uh, one year or so and uh, going forward uh, i wouldn't be surprised if india does reach its uh, target of not just 300 million passengers but uh, being the third largest aviation market in the world uh, after the US and China which would be a, a very very commendable performance right uh, so thank you so much for taking out uh, time for us uh, hope you have a great day